Good day, my name is Randy Armstrong. I'm the Chief Architect of Sparhawk Software, and this is part three of the Global Discovery Server demonstration. Global Discovery Server is a new component of the Unified Architecture specification. And uh, I've demonstrated, I've been going through different features of it in two prior videos. In this video, I'm going to be discussing certificate management. And this uh, has to be one of the most exciting features of the, uh, of the GDS because it really simplifies the process of setting up networks of applications and having them con connect securely with each other. And this has always often been a trouble in the past is that security setup has been, been challenging and the tendency is people just want to turn it off just to get everything to work because, because it becomes something that blocks them. But that's simply not an option anymore. You've got to get that security to work. So you want to have some standard process that you can follow that will get you to the point where you can easily configure your applications. So in this particular demo, I've got the GDS, which is a sample GDS developed by the OPC Foundation. And it has a single certificate authority, which is used for all application certificates. So um, it's uh, uh, you could have uh, different GDSs could have multiple certificate authorities. You, there's different permutations combinations, but we just have one. And so so when you request a certificate from the GDS, you get a new certificate signed by that authority, and your trust list uh, your trust list only has a CA certificate. So what that means is every application registered with this GDS will trust every other application registered with this GDS, uh, which is is gives you a, a some basic control over your system. And what it also means is that nobody can come along and, and install a new application. So even if they're on their LAN, they won't be able to connect to anything unless they have the administrative privileges necessary to connect to the GDS and, and request a certificate. So we're sort of go back to, in this particular demonstration, I'm going to be configuring, uh, requesting a certificate for a client, and I'm going to be using the push, uh, the remote management model to uh, to uh, update a uh, update the certificate of a server, and then I'm going to connect securely. So before I do this demonstration, I will show that I cannot connect securely because the applications don't currently trust each other. And then after I've done the configuration, they will trust each other. So the first thing I want to go back here is I'm going to load my client application. Oops. There we go. Load my client application. And I'm going to go here, and I'm going to request a certificate. And so it's requested it. Now, normally this process would, in a real system, this process would involve s some authorization. Some you'd have to type in some SSO credentials, some something that to make sure that the the person asking for the certificate is authorized to ask for the certificate. This is an extremely important security step that is skipped because this is just a, a can and this is just a can demo to show you the functionality and give you an idea of the capabilities. So we can now go take a look at the trust list that is uh, that is goes with this. In this case, it simply has this system default CA, which is the um, which is the default CA for the GDS. So I have configured the um, configured the uh, uh, the client. Now what I want to do is I want to configure the server. So I'm going to use the push management to go out and find the server. OK. And I'm going to connect to that server. 
And so what you see here, this is this is a this server itself is initially configured with a self-signed certificate. And so uh, in order to do the update the certificate, I must have an encrypted channel. Um, because that's the only way you can protect against protect the data that might be flowing across. But in this case, I don't trust the certificate yet. It's it's like a chicken and egg thing. I can't connect to it securely unless I trust the certificate. Um, but after I after I've trusted the left after uh, I can't tr I can't set up my trust relationship until I provided the certificate. So a server that's designed to support the push model should have a default state that will allow a client, an admin client, to come in and do this initial provisioning. How you actually do that is going to vary from, from, from application to application. In this particular case, the uh, application looks to see if the trust list is empty. If the trust list is empty, it allows anybody to connect because it assumes it's in an initial state. And once the trust list has something in it, it will then only allow trusted clients to connect, which in this case will be only clients that have a certificate issued by the GDSCA. Uh, other uh, other uh, possibilities will be, so for example, um, if you have a physical device with the UA server, you may have a button that has to be pressed. And so you press that button, and for the next five minutes, the server will allow somebody to come in. This works. This is, this, this is the way it works with a lot of wireless LANs. And there's probably a numer numerous other strategies you could, you could use to allow this initial provisioning st step and, and, and to get around that, uh, that chicken and egg problem that comes up whenever you want to do security. But... Whatever you do, if you're building a server that has push management, you've got to solve that chicken and egg problem. So I'll just trust this, and that will allow me to have my connection. And this is just uh, connecting. So now what I want to do is I want to request a new certificate. So the request is going on. Now... It's now prompting me for a password because if you're updating security features, um, you don't want to allow any user to do this. You want to have some some credentials. So in this particular sample, I just have a username, a, an administrator user, and I'm going to type that in. But so. So I just typed that in that allowed me to update it. And it says that the server needs to be restarted, which I just took care of in the background. So now what should happen is I should be able to go into my client. Add the, uh, I'm just going to use discovery to find the server URL. I'm going to copy that URL into my client so I can connect to it. And see, here's the uh, server that's available. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select security. So I've got the basic 256, and I'm going to connect. And as you can see, I now am able to connect with security to a server running on another remote machine. And the it, this was all done via, via UA using secure connections uh, with the GDS in the middle issuing certificates um, to each of, each of the actors there. And uh, the, uh, one, the one step which I, I sort of glossed over a bit was the restarting of the server. 
which is just something that happened if you, uh, properly designed servers will be able to simply shut down their endpoints and restart them automatically after they get a certificate update or in some cases for high availability servers they may be able to, to do that do it on the fly and, and maintain and without interrupting any connections these are details that are going to be left up to the server implementers but this sort of the, that kind of behavior sort of goes into the whoever's when you're developing a server that implements these remote management ca capabilities you have to think through some of these use cases and make sure that the end user is going to have a happy experience when they're using these when they're using these features and that's uh and that's uh and if you do that then then it will make make end users of ua applications uh extremely happy so that's all I had to demonstrate when it comes to security. I hope uh, you have a better appreciation for the different features which are available as part of the GDS. And uh, all of the code which I've demonstrated today is available to OPC Foundation members. And uh, it's also, there's a standard server that where the GDS is running, which, uh, which will allow people to connect to as a, as a test platform. Thank you very much.